Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to invest in dividend paying stocks. And so we're going to be using the Fidelity platform. Uh, so if you have a Fidelity investment brokerage account or if you have a Fidelity Roth IRA account, uh, you'll be able to utilize this platform. And the reason I like this platform is because Fidelity offers just really great research tools. And it also makes it really easy to screen stocks which makes it a lot easier for you to filter through stocks and also uh, speeding up the process in, in your research. Um, okay, so once you're in Fidelity, you're going to go ahead and click on Use and Research, and we're going to click Stocks. And on the left side of the screen here, you'll see there is a screen filter stock screener. Uh, and this is what we're going to use to be able to filter our, our stock list. So we'll click on Stock Screener. And... Uh, once we're in this page, we'll hit start a screen. So we're going to start a screen. And we're going to look for dividend yield, or dividend paying stocks specifically. So we want stocks that uh, pay us a good amount of dividends. Uh, and this is great for investors who are looking for quarterly income uh, because these stocks pay you uh, a quarterly dividend based on the yield relative to the stock price. Okay, so now that we're here, uh, there's we're going to look at a couple different attributes down here on the left side and you'll see that there's you know we can filter stocks by security price uh, a popular one is dividend yield so we'll take a look at that in a second uh, but you can also you can also filter through different other types of attributes like uh, or, or metrics such as the p ratio we have the peg ratio we have the price performance within the last 20 to 55 weeks and then we have some more uh, categories down below here that you can search through as well so again we're gonna look specifically at dividends so we can go ahead and click dividend here we'll click on the plus sign and we're gonna look specifically just for simplicity we're gonna look at uh, dividend yield and here uh, you'll see that we have about 9,775 matches so that is a lot of stocks to look through and you know it's gonna take a long time to look through all these stocks so we can go ahead and narrow down our list further. So uh, what we're going to look at is we want uh, companies that pay the highest dividend yield. So uh, here there's a, a dividend yield of 4.75% and above. So that's really great, especially if you're looking to get some income. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then there's some other dividend yields as well. So, um, you know, you have 3.13% 3, 3 uh, through 473 we have another 400 matches there, so we can go ahead and look at that. And then, you know, uh, if you want to look for at companies that have a slightly lower dividend yield, uh, be because another thing you want to consider uh, when you're investing in dividend stocks is because the company is paying dividends, that means the company has less money to reinvest into the business. So as long as you're aware of that uh, when you're investing in a higher dividend yield stock, uh, then, th then that's okay. But you also want to make sure that you understand that the more dividends that goes back to investors, the less money that is going back into the business to grow it. So if you want to look at companies that do pay dividends but are also still kind of in, in the growth phase, then we can search for some of these medium to lower dividend yield paying stocks. Um, so for the purpose of this video, uh, we'll, we'll keep it at a high to high, very high dividend yield. And as you see, we've narrowed down our list to about 907 uh, stocks here. And so that's still quite a bit of, that's quite, still quite a bit of, of, of stocks to look through. So I, I personally want to lower, uh, narrow down my list. And so let's take a look at what other categories we can use to uh, make our, our matches, our lists smaller. So another good uh, category and metric that, um, I like to, to look at is company value. So let's click on company value and we are going to look at price to earnings ratio. Uh, and the reason I like this metric is because the price to earnings ratio tells you how much you're going to pay uh, relative to the earnings. So for example, if a company with a lower P ratio means that you're going to be paying less for the stock uh, for the earnings that it generates, versus a company with the higher peer ratio, meaning you're gonna be you're gonna be paying more for the for the earnings. And a lot of the times uh, companies with higher peer ratios are typically growth stocks, so companies that have a higher growth expectation. Uh, and then when you're investing in companies with low peer ratios, 
these are companies that not necessarily have a lot of uh, room for growth or at least expectations uh, from the investors. Um, so this is a good metric that we can look at. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the price to uh, trailing 12 month earnings. So that way we get a good sense of, of P ratios. So re remember we talked about um, dividend yields and how companies with higher dividend yields, you know, could, you know, basically have less money to reinvest back into the business. Um, we want to keep that in mind when we're filtering through P ratios. So for example, we have some very low P ratios from zero to 7.96. So this is, you know, th these are going to be companies that don't have a lot of room for growth. Um, so, so maybe we, we want to take a look at that and see if we find any bargains. So we can go ahead and click that. And then also what we can do is we can maybe aim for some of these higher P ratios like 7.96 to 12.23. And that way we, we get a little bit of a company that you know has some, some good amount of growth uh, in, in the future. Uh, okay, so now our list is down to 392. Uh, which is great, uh, but I still want to lower uh, this 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 list because uh, I I don't want to look in, look at 392 companies. I want to make this list smaller. So let's find some more filters that we can look through uh, to find a better match. So the next thing I want to look at is going to be let's see what sort of categories we have on company growth. Um, here we have some revenue growth and we have some uh, cash flow growth as well. So because a company is paying dividends, um, I want us to be able to see if they have, or maybe we should look at profitability. So let's see what management and growth has. Here we have some gross profit margins, we have some return on assets, free cash flow, and we have some profit margin. So I want to make sure a company is profiting. So let's see if we can find um, some companies that are profiting. Let's see, tr trolling 12 month here. Uh, and here we go. So profit margins, we have, you know, zero to 4.6%. Um, I want, I like to see if we can find any companies that have the highest amounts of uh, profit margin. So here's a list of 28.55% and above. And we have 100, 80 stocks. So we'll, let's let's see what kind of stocks we can find here that are highly profiting. And just to you know maybe get filter some more stocks into the list, we'll we'll go ahead and select 15 to 28 percent uh, profit margins as well. Uh, and our list is down to 261. So we're we're getting closer here. Um, and I, I I would like to get this list smaller just so that we can um, you know look at a more specific list of stocks here. So let's go back to company uh, company growth, and let's just go ahead and filter some more some more uh, categories here metrics. Let's look at cash flow growth rate. So let's see if we can find any company that's paying dividends, but is also simultaneously growing their cash flow. Um, so here you have some pretty good cash flow. I mean, you have 31 stocks here. Uh, let's go ahead and click high cash flow growth rates as well. And now we're down to 77 uh, matches. So our list is getting a lot better. Um, and as you see here on the right hand side, we're starting to see um, some stocks that are filtered here. So I think this might be a good, a, a good point where we can stop filtering uh, just because we, want, we don't want to completely source out all of the stocks that are paying dividends. Um, but I think this gives us a good list that we, we can look at. And so, uh, you know, we can, we can filter some of these um, stocks a bit more. I think the one last metric we would probably want to do is going to be a, a value metric. Um, so we go to company value. Uh, we, let's go ahead and look at the price to growth ratio. Um, and the reason I like this metric a lot is because you know, if if we can find stocks that uh, are growing relative to the the expectations, then that that would be a good thing. Um, but as you see, there's not a whole lot of options here. It it, it probably is because maybe some of these companies um, aren't having any earnings. Uh, but we can maybe take a look at those. 
or we can just take a look at these here. So let's go ahead and download results. So we're going to download, download the list and we're going to click valuation growth. And here we have an Excel spreadsheet where we can do a little bit more filtering. Uh, so let's go ahead and filter this list here. So we can uh, filter from smallest to largest or vice versa. Um, so we have the highest dividend yield. We can go from greatest to, uh, greatest to smallest. So there you go. So as you see, you know, at the top of the list, I'll make this a little bit bigger. At the top of the list, we have Zim uh, Integrated Shipping Services. You, here you see they're paying a 33% dividend yield. You know, so if if the dividend yield is this large, that to me is kind of like a red flag because I I, I want to find out why is it that they're paying this high of a dividend dividend yield, and if you look at the P ratio, they're, they're selling at one point four, and that to me tells me that there's probably not a whole lot of growth expectations here, um, so I may not want to do this stock even though. They're paying high dividends because that means that their stock price can go can go down in the future. And if the stock price goes down, even if they're paying 33% dividend yield, that's going to lower the amount of dividends I get simply because the security price is going down. Uh, so we may want to filter uh, from from smallest to largest on the P ratio as well. So let, let's take a look at let's go ahead and remove some of these P ratios that are really low. Because we want to invest in companies that, that, you know, are not going to go, you know, extinct within the next couple of years because we're going to be relying on these companies uh, for dividends. So here we have some more companies here. Carl Carl Group uh, looks like they're paying uh, a three point three percent dividend yield, and they have a price to earnings ratio of five point five. And their profit margins are 33%, and they've grown their cash flow um, about 100% in the last five years. So this is a company that we may want to look into, and I happen to be familiar with this company. That you know, Carl, the, the Carl Group is a, a you know equity. It's an equity firm that they invest in all sorts of equity investments, such as real estate. Um, so this is a company we may want to look at. So let's go ahead and take take the uh, copy, get the sig ticker signal of C CG, and we're gonna go back to the Fidelity, and we're gonna type CG as a ticker, and here we have the call group. All right, so. So you know this is a cap. This is a financial capital markets firm, an investment firm that specializes in direct fund of fund investments, and they have direct investments that specialize in management led leverage buyouts, privatizations, debt ventures, strategic minority equity investments, structured credit, global distressed and corporate opportunities, in small middle market equity private platforms, consolidations of build up senior debt, mezzanine leverage finance, and venture and growth capital financing seed startup. Early venture, emerging growth, turnaround, mid venture, late venture, and pipe. So that they're involved in a lot of different uh, types of investments, and you know they pay us uh, a dividend. Um, so if we wanted to find out some more information on this company, we can look at you know we, you can search the company's website, um, and we can dive in a little bit further into the statistics here. So if we look at statistics. Uh, and we can get a better sense of their of their financials and their valuation and their performance. So they have a P ratio that's less than the industry average. So that to me is a good sign because it tells me this company could be potentially uh, undervalued. And we uh, P ratio five year average of twelve compared to the industry of twenty one. Uh, the the price to cash flow in the most recent quarter is is six times versus seven point seven for the industry. So that's another good sign. And then uh, price to sell most recent quarter is 2.2 compared to the industry average of 8. So that's a good sign. All right. So, uh, next up, we want to look at um, revenue growth in the last five years, 31% um, versus the industry average of 14%. Cash flow growth rate is 107%. 
the, the, the one red flag here that I might want to look at is this forward earnings per share long-term growth is projected to be negative uh, 5% uh, compared to the industry average of 9 So this may be something that you want to be cautious of. Uh, and maybe it's worth look at, continuing to look at different stocks. Because if I'm going to be uh, counting on this company for dividend income, uh, I, I, I would ideally like to see a positive earnings per share long-term growth rate there. Um, so... Uh, as far as profit margins, I mean, this company is generating a good amount of profits compared to the industry average and uh, pretty high return on equity, 52%. Um, and then on the, on the debt side, it, it, it may look as if they have, uh, you know, a, a pretty good amount of debt here. So something to look at as well. Um, so, so there you have it. Uh, you know, that's a quick and easy process um, that we can run through to find uh, dividend paying stocks. Carl I Group Carl, Carl I Group is probably not a company that I would personally invest in um, just because of the forward earnings per share growth rates. But you know this could be potentially a, a pretty good dividend paying stock that you can rely on and and sure maybe the stock price you know won't grow as much but you can pretty much count on that you're gonna be receiving a three percent dividend yield. So Maybe some, maybe a stock you want to have in your portfolio. Uh, I would definitely look further into the forward earnings per share negative growth rates, um, and, and maybe it's worth going back to our Excel sheet here and just continuing to look through these stocks to see if there's a better deal and see if we can find a company that has a positive forward earnings per share growth rate versus negative like Carl I Group. So there you have it. I mean, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, I would appreciate it if you subscribe and like my videos. This would help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, thanks for watching and until the next video. Thank you very much.